2020 Chevrolet Corvette First Lieutenant Review. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. Since its inception in 1953, the Chevrolet Corvette has always been a relative bargain, offering lots of straight line and cornering performance for less money than similarly capable sports cars. Newly mid-engined, the 8th generation Corvette Stingray adds exotic styling to the mix. But like its European competition, your dream Chevy gets dramatically more expensive with every passing minute spent on the online configurator or options sheet. However, there's a case to be made for a zero option C8, as I experienced over a week-long test of a 2020 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray First Lieutenant, dressed in ceramic matrix gray metallic paint with adrenaline red leather, a modern homage to the first Corvette's white and red color scheme. With a starting price of $58,900 and a $1,095 destination charge, this tester cost five bucks shy of 60 grand, though it felt far richer than that. Even or perhaps especially, in its most basic form, the C8 Corvette is a genuinely enjoyable sports car, and like its forebears, it does nearly everything well. The Chevrolet Corvette is only the second mid-engine car from GM, following the Pontiac Fiero. Yet despite its parent company's limited experience building such an exotic type of vehicle, the Corvette is remarkably composed and enjoyable to drive, offering instant thrills that only increase as the driver becomes more accustomed to the idiosyncrasies associated with the engine placement. Part and parcel to that familiar, but exotic, driving experience is the VET's engine. Just like the C7, the C8 gets a direct injected 6.2-liter V8 with two valves per cylinder, but the 2020 model receives dry sump lubrication, which allows it to sit lower in the chassis than before. Producing 490 horsepower and 465 pound-feet, the V8 sends power to the rear wheels via an 8-speed dual-clutch transmission, Chevy's first such gearbox. In sum, the powertrain works very well, with the good old American V8 playing nicely with the DCT even at low speeds. Although we won't get world-beating Ferrari and Lamborghini levels of performance until the Z06 and ZR1 arrive, the base engine leaves nothing to be desired. Nearly 500 horsepower is plenty for a vehicle that weighs as little as the carbon-intensive Corvette, 3,535 pounds, and the 8-speed ratchets off gear shifts instantaneously, though like other DCTs, it can only dispatch gears one at a time. Helping compensate for this mechanical limitation is a feature that allows the driver to hold down the left paddle, forcing the gearbox to downshift sequentially as engine speed allows, useful when approaching a corner, for example. This is also one of few performance cars that doesn't require an exhaust upgrade to sound good. Around town, the base exhaust fades into the background, but as speeds and RPMs rise, the V8 makes itself known with a husky, decidedly American burble that seems wholly at odds with the Corvette's newly exotic form factor. That said, the $1,195 performance exhaust seems like a decent buy, though I doubt you'd be able to feel the extra 5 horsepower and pound to foot it adds. If I were signing checks, I'd probably skip it, if only for the meme of a sub-60k Corvette. For all the strength training in the engine room, this particular Stingray doesn't seem to have skipped its agility classes either. Even riding on base spec all-season tires, the Chevy rarely wanted for grip, thanks in part to a mechanical limited slip rear differential and massively meaty 305-30R20 rear tires, 245-35R19S show up in front. In fact, the most exciting thing about piloting a mid-engine Corvette is how deftly it handles power on corner exit, eliminating the high-speed hairiness that often plagues rear-drive sports cars. Thanks to those wide tires, the brakes are even better at stopping than the engine is at going. Brembo 4-piston front calipers bite down hard on 12.6-inch rotors, while 2-piston clamps and 13.3-inch rotors show up on the rear axle. The $5,000 Z51 package brings larger rotors and one-piece calipers to the party, but the base setup is good enough for even max attack canyon driving, I suspect the Z51 stoppers would make more sense in sustained track driving, but outside of that extreme situation, the base brakes are more than capable enough. The Z51 pack also includes tighter suspenders that, again, probably feel sublime at Buttonwillow or Sebring, but the base suspension is just fine for the Angeles Forest Highway while yielding a creamy ride on the broken pavement. Body motions are absent in this base model, and although its vertical center of gravity is actually a bit higher compared to the C7 Corvette, 
The C8 seats are mounted much closer to the vehicle center, making the new VET feel more responsive and exciting. What's more, the engine's rear mid-placement lightens up the front tires significantly, yielding light steering that's nearly telepathic on a twisty road. Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.